T minus 16 seconds. Sound suppression water system has been activated, protecting Discovery and the launch pad from acoustical energy. We have a go for main engine start. T minus five, four, three, two, one. Booster ignition and liftoff of Discovery hoisting harmony to the heavens and opening new gateways for international science. Discovery has cleared the tower. For thousands of years, mankind has looked toward space, but it's been less than a century since we could actually travel there. Discovery's roll maneuver is complete. A few centuries ago, almost all scientists believed in the biblical account of creation. However, by the time the first astronaut launched into space, many scientists had abandoned this history. Many astronomers had come to believe that our solar system and the planets and moons within it formed all by themselves without a creator about four and a half billion years ago. But what did we find when we arrived in space? Do the planets and moons of our solar system actually support this belief? Or are they consistent with the Bible instead? The answer to this question might surprise you. Welcome to What You Aren't Being Told About Astronomy, Volume 1, Our Created Solar System. I'm Spike Pissaris, your host. For a number of years, I worked as an engineer in the U.S. military space program. I entered that program as an atheist and an evolutionist. I left it as a creationist and a Christian. In this video, you'll discover some of the evidences that have convinced me, along with many others, that the Bible is true and evolution is not. I'll be your guide as we tour the solar system together. We'll see stunning pictures and movies of planets, moons, and other objects. Some are our next door neighbors in space. Others are vast distances away. We'll discover that often, these objects do not support evolutionary ideas. Many of them appear to be quite young, not billions of years old. In fact, according to the current evolutionary models, many of the objects in our solar system cannot exist at all. Now that probably contradicts everything you've heard before. You've probably been told that evolutionary astronomers have it all figured out, and that their models prove that our solar system formed all by itself, billions of years ago. Well, you'll have to hear the evidence and judge for yourself. In this video, you'll discover what you're not being told about our solar system. So let's get started. Before we can talk about how our solar system got here, we need to clarify exactly what the solar system is. When we talk about the solar system, we're talking about our sun and everything that orbits around it. This includes the eight major planets in our solar system, along with many moons, asteroids, comets, and some smaller objects as well. By the way, this diagram is not to scale. In this video, we'll be discussing all the planets and some of their moons in our solar system. In order from the Sun, the planets are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto is a special case that we'll be discussing later. Here's what the planets would look like if you could line them all up next to the sun. In real life, the planets are much farther away from the sun and each other than this, but I wanted to show you how big the planets are compared to each other in the sun. By the way, you are here. So where did the system come from? There are two competing models for the origin of our solar system. This is a pretty straightforward issue. Either the solar system was created or it wasn't. In this video, I'm going to use the word evolution to describe the belief that our solar system was not created. This word is often used to describe biological evolution, of course, but astronomers commonly use it in a broader meaning as well. So when I use the word evolution, I'm not talking about plants or animals. I'm talking about the belief that our solar system and everything in it formed and developed all by itself. I used to believe in evolution, but not anymore. I now believe that the entire universe and everything in it, including our solar system, was created by God as described in the Bible. Of course, many scientists today disagree strongly with this idea. These men and women believe that no creation occurred. They believe that the solar system formed billions of years ago without a creator being involved. In this video, you'll discover why their model is wrong. Of course, this won't prove that the creation model is right. It's impossible to use science to prove any historical event happened. All we can do is see which scenario fits the evidence the best. And that's what this video is all about. Most people have been told that all the evidence points toward evolution. As we tour the solar system together, ask yourself this question. Are the planets and moons consistent 
with these evolutionary ideas or not? I think you'll see that the answer is no. I think you'll see that the evidence is perfectly consistent with the creation viewpoint instead. So let's discuss these two opposing models. The creation model is based on the Bible. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The Bible doesn't give us a specific date for this event, but from other passages in the Bible, we can calculate that this would have been about 6,000 years ago. On the other hand, someone who believes in evolution denies the biblical account. The dominant evolutionary model today is called the solar nebula model. According to this model, our solar system formed from a swirling cloud of gas and dust about 4.5 to 4.6 billion years ago. The evolutionary story goes something like this. In the beginning, there was gas. About 4.6 billion years ago, an enormous cloud of gas collapsed and started to swirl. Most of the gas went into the middle and became our sun. The rest of it swirled around the new sun and started to condense into grains of dust. As the grains of dust orbited the sun, they started to stick together and became clumps of dust. Then the clumps stuck together to become little rocks. The little rocks stuck together to become big rocks. After enough time had passed, the gas had turned into huge asteroids. These asteroids stuck together to become the planets we see today. Astronomers have a special name for these asteroids. They're called planetesimals, which means little planets. Since you probably haven't heard this word before, I'm going to call them asteroids instead. It means basically the same thing anyway. For example, most secular astronomers believe that the asteroids we see in our solar system today are leftover planetesimals that never quite got it together to form planets. Evolutionists are confident that their model is correct. After all, it explains why all the planets orbit the sun in the same direction. It also explains why the solar system is flat today, with all the planets lining up in a disk shape as they orbit the sun. Plus, it explains why the inner planets are rocky, and the outer planets are made of gas and ice. Supposedly, the heavier rocky materials were able to condense close to the sun, while the lighter materials were more volatile and could only condense further away from the sun. Sounds good, doesn't it? The problem is that it doesn't work. It turns out that you can't build planets like the evolutionists say. You can build clumps of dust, certainly. We know that dust particles stick together. Just look under your furniture and see the dust bunnies there for proof. Well, experiments in space have shown that dust bunnies will form in a vacuum, too. The problem is that once you have big clumps of dust, and maybe even some small pebbles, they don't grow together anymore. They start impacting each other too fast to stick together. Instead, they start breaking each other up in the collisions. Gravity isn't strong enough to overcome this until after the rocks have formed into small asteroids. So, despite the fancy computer animations you see on science videos, there's no way to get from dust clumps to planets. Evolutionary astronomers know this is true. That's why you see quotes like this one in the astronomy textbooks. Once these planetesimals have been formed, further growth of planets may occur through the gravitational accretion into large bodies. But just how that takes place is not understood. And in the scientific journals, we see comments like this. The formation of planetesimals, the kilometer-sized planetary precursors, is still a puzzling process. How the first stage of this process, primary accretion, works is a fundamental unsolved problem of planetary science. So before we even discuss any planets or moons, the evolutionary theory is breaking down already. It can't produce the asteroids it needs to build the planets. Will it do any better when we examine the actual planets and moons themselves? Let's take a look and see. 